everybody, I'll keep this really quick. Today we are doing the Hitchhiker Handbag Size by Bent Needle. I love this bag. Um, I probably would not recommend it for a beginner sewer. It is, it's quite stiff. So every piece, every outside piece that you see, I've actually put stabilizer on, not foam. Um, I haven't ironed it yet, I literally just finished it. But I love the way it comes out, it's super cute. It's like very much an armband bag. So if you'd like to see how I make it, please stay tuned. Alrighty guys, let's get started. Um, as always, I'm starting with the strap. So I'm doing a vinyl back with the strap and then doing a vinyl accent running piece along the top. Um, and I'm using a dark green vinyl that I got from my upholstery person at the start of the year. And same with the red actually, they both come from him. So it's just a nice dark green and then a bright red. And the reason I'm using these two colors is because they come up in the outside fabric. So I'm just gonna rub the end of that a little bit to make the double-sided tape edging come off. Now my outside pieces have been interfaced with my extra heavy iron on non-woven. Um, and then I've also put stabilizer on all the pieces but just within the seam allowance i didn't use foam on the outside of my bag because i'm not quilting it so i just want to see how it goes without it because i've never made this before and the hardware that you're going to need is two d rings two swivel clips and a strap adjuster for the strap to be removable, and then just your four rings, your bag feet, and some zippers. So I'm gonna have a double zipper on the top of this, and then one zipper on the inside. I've opted to only do one zipper pocket, uh, one slip pocket, sorry. The pattern does say do two, one on each side, but I'm just gonna do one slip pocket on one side, and then one zipper pocket on the other, because the bag is quite small. And I don't want to over pocket it. So I'm nearly done. So the way I do this is I pinch it together and then push down over what is approximately the center. Um, I found that when I was drawing the line in the center that this was actually a lot more difficult because I was over concentrating on that line. Okay, so now that that's in half. Turn the light on. And I'm going to put my stitch length up to four and I want the join to be facing upwards because we're going to hide that with this accent piece. And the reason I do it this way instead of double folding both is because I want this to be thin enough that it's going to go through my strap adjuster with ease. I don't want it to be too tight that it's a struggle. Now I'm using black thread because uh, the I just want it to pop. I also don't own a dark green. I've only got the bright lime green and I decided that that wouldn't work out either. Now, even though my strap is going to be red and green, I also didn't want to um, do red stitching on all the green. I'm just holding it in the center. swivel and go across. Now my green is a little bit longer than my red so you're going to see that pop out but I'll just chop off the excess green when we get to it. And I just ran out of bobbin thread. I thought I had more on this bobbin but that's okay. I have another one that's going to slip from there. That lied to me that bobbin. I swear I was going to get my whole strap out of it. Anyway, okay, click the fresh one in, 
Now if this happens to you, don't stress. First thing I'm going to do is come and chop off the excess of this one so that it doesn't get all tangled because that would annoy me. And then I'm going to go two stitches before that. I'm going to stitch. I'm going to go back a hole. And then I can just continue stitching. backstitch at a high speed I always find on my machine that it doesn't like it and it creates um, loops and knots in the back of your strap alright so I'm going to take some scissors and chop off this little bit here like so then I'm going to take my strap and feed it around the loop part of my strap adjuster these ones are movable, but um, I do also stock solid bars, so you can use either type. I'm actually trying to use up all the movable ones so that I can only stock the solid ones because I actually like them more. Alright, so I'm going to do my crisscross thing that I've decided I really enjoy doing. And then down at an angle. To the bottom, needle down and then pivot, needle down and then pivot up to the top, and then back stitch, and then just trim your tails, and then lay the strap so that the back is right sides up, and then I'm just because it's a swivel clip, it doesn't matter which way I put it on, so I'm just going to put it flat side to the back, hold it so that there's no twists, and then feed it back up through the strap adjuster. And then down the other side, like this. And then again, check now to make sure that there's no twists here. Always check that. So once you stitch it, that's it. You're going to perforate a lot of holes that you're going to have to try and copy later on. Okay, so again, I'm folding it so that the green goes on itself, and then I'm going to do my little crisscross here. And I'm starting at the edge where the hardware is, so that my foot will run alongside it. This also prevents me from overstitching up. Needle down and pivot. And then up to the top and then back stitch. Pull it out and trim the tails. So that's your shoulder strap done. Uh, so I'm going to just pop that aside. Now I've had a quick read through the instructions, uh, but I also forgot to pull them out for this. So we're going to see how I go. Actually, let's do the handles while I'm at that bit. I've got a full bobbin so there's not going to be any joins. Uh, so I'm doing an all vinyl handle which I haven't done in a while. Also mainly why I'm doing it. So as you can see they are shorter handles than normal um, but the idea is it's to be more like a, a suitcase so you don't want super long handles. It's more of an arm bag than a shoulder bag. And then if you want it on your shoulder, that's why we have the um, strap. So this way I'm going to fold one side on and then the other. Like that. And then fold it on itself again. So I'm going to start at a short end, but I'm going to head towards the join side. So you always want to stitch that side first, because that is going to make sure that everything lines up and then you can just stitch the other side to make it flat. So I'm just doing it a little bit at a 
at a time and lining up that edge. Uh, if you're new to sewing, you could also do clips along the edge. And you always have your needle down to pivot your fabric. Get back to the end and back stitch. Now you can see here, see how mine's got a little bit of a twist? That just means that the vinyl has shifted a little bit. So what I do is I twist it the opposite way and pull to make it flatter. Better. All right. Next side. Because these are short, I will do one full side first. You also want to leave, I don't discuss this often, when you're doing an all vinyl strap, I'm actually leaving a bit of a gap. So when I fold it on itself, it's not bulky on this edge. It doesn't have to be a big gap, it's only like one millimeter or like, I don't know, a very small amount. But it will help. Helps this to sit flatter when we're finished stitching. Otherwise, you're more likely to have like a bulkier edge along this side. I just heard Hobby's alarm go off, so I may have to stop the video soon. Two straps are done. All right, let's reach into the box. So, stabilizer, into uh, non-woven extra heavy iron-on, and then the fabric. So the idea is, is the join here is going to allow this to bend at a nice right angle to make the bag. So the pieces we are now looking for are these bad boys. You should have four of these and two in opposite directions. Now the pattern's really good. She actually printed a piece for that and then a piece for that direction. But you could just print off and laminate one and just make sure that you reverse two when you cut them. So now the idea is, is that we're going to stitch it along here. So I'm going to go back to adjoining stitch length which for me is about two and a half. We're going to back stitch and then stitch up to the top. And you can chain stitch these. You can grab the other one and do the same thing. So again, we're going to put it right sides together and line up the edge. And then back stitch. Trim that one off. So the reason I do it this way is it's just a really good way to um, save on thread. Right? Grab that one. Now to get into here, I'm going to pivot it over that way so that I can just back stitch and then sew to there. And then trim that one off. And look, there's literally no tails to trim. And then the final one, we're going to sit there. So I'm going to pivot this out of the way. Now, if you're new to sewing, you don't have to do this. This is more of like an intermediate thing to do. Trim that one. Trim that one. And voila. So now you've got this kind of a shape. On both of them. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold out that seam allowance and just finger press it open. You could also iron it open if you wanted to. 
uh, but I can just crease it by kind of moving it back and forth like that. Okay. So next up, we have our little vinyl accents. So they are going over the edge like this. So I'm going to take some double-sided tape just so they don't move while I'm sewing them. Nothing major, just like a little piece like this. It's just to kind of tack it in place. Now, the bag comes with three different types of corner accents. I chose the most difficult one, which are the round ones. Um, just because they were the most difficult. That's actually the reason I chose to do them. So we're just going to do one at a time. A slow and steady wins the race with circles. I know I say that a lot in a lot of the video, but it's still pretty true. So I'm going to start at a corner and I am still going to backstitch. And then I'm just going to go very slowly, constantly maneuvering the bag. So if you need to, lift up your foot. And then, so I didn't cut the slit that it says, because I can just come in here and see where I need to chop it to, to there. We're going to add the um, rivets after I've done all the pieces. So you want to make sure that this is laying flat open like that, and then place it on top. And then we're going to go again. So again, under the foot, do a couple of stitches and back stitch. And then we're gonna slowly move around the circle. And then back stitch at the end. Trim your tails. And then do the little slit. So where these join up is where you have to chop up to. Like that. So that's one done at the tops. We've also got the little bottom accents. So again, if you need to, chuck some double-sided tape on. I've also kept the um, pattern pieces for this right here with me. so that I, And I've punched out the holes so that I can place the rivets where they need to be. We'll need those. One, two, three, four, one, two, okay. So while I've got them all here, I'm just gonna put some double-sided tape on all of them. And then I can put the scissors and the double-sided tape away. Now again, if you're new to sewing and you really, really want to make this bag, maybe perhaps think about doing the square ones and not the round ones. Okay. And always clean up as you go. You'll see me do it a lot. I put, you know, everything back where it lives. The reason for that is because it can very quickly become chaotic around your space. And a chaotic space makes for a chaotic mind, which is not helpful when you're trying to sew. Alright. On the corner. You could actually stick them all on if you wanted to. Again, to avoid the chaotic space. Just make sure you remember to sew them all. Okay, so again, I'm making sure that this is open flat because it's going to eliminate the bulk when we stitch these on. You 
you'll notice that this spins around quite quickly with circles. Trim off the tails, flip it over and then cut that slit. That's just going to help later when we're joining all the bag. So it's worth remembering to do because if you forget later it might get more difficult for you. So back stitch. Try and keep the back stitching within the seam allowance and then you won't even see it. Now the reason I actually get fake nails is because they're like mini stilettos to kind of point and push everything where I want it to be. It's not because I want my hands to be pretty. I go horse riding. It's actually quite difficult to, you know, ride with nails. I always get them cut every two weeks religiously because otherwise they get too long. But I get them kind of pointed, you can't really see that, so that they can be used as, you know, another sewing tool, really. Okay. So then these ones go on as they look like they do. So you just match the straight side with the straight side. Like this. I know they look weird now, but they're going to come together beautifully. Backstitch, and then slowly twist it around. camera so far away today so I'm not going to knock it while doing this. Alright so that's all for on one of them. I'm just going to do the other one and then we'll go through and put the rivets in them. You don't have to do the rivets but they do look nice. There's like a nice accent. Or at least I like them. Okay, up and under. So this is probably the fiddliest part of the whole bag. And if I was going to quilt this bag, I would join these pieces on and then quilt it. Um, I might do another one in a live one day and quilt it all. Or I might do an all vinyl one. That'd be fun. This bag is also really cute with embroidery. Um, and the space that you can embroider in actually works really well for a 4x4 four four machine. Because it's only a small space. Okay, so I am going to grab... All my rivet stuff. So I've got my hole punch, my rivet set, my rivets, and I've grabbed a permanent marker. Because this is such a dark vinyl, I need to be able to see what I'm doing. And I don't think a pen's going to cut it. So just line that up and put a dot where I want my rivets to be. You'll notice I'm not circling out the whole thing. And that's because that's quite a big hole that I punched. And then one, two, three. Permanent markers are a really easy way to mark it. You just have to make sure you don't botch it because it won't come off. Okay. So I'm going to punch all the holes for one and then do all the rivets and then we'll switch to the other one. So you just want to line this up. Now I used to have a hand hole punch in my early videos. I have since bought this and I will never go back to a handheld one. This is amazing, this thing. It 
punches layers so very well. Two and three. Okay, so got some of my holes done. Grab a rivet. Grab a rivet. Wow, I really can't speak this morning. Uh, and then squish. I also really like this um, antique bronze with the dark green. I think that looks really nice together. I actually stared at my fabric for a really long time before I made this because uh, I couldn't pick one. This is actually one of the newest fabrics that I've bought. So for those in Australia, it's from Spotlight and it's in the sateen section. Oops, dropped a cap. It's all right, I'll get it later. So I'm just gonna rotate around the bag. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You could have punched all your holes and then done all your rivets. I didn't do it that way because I don't have a lot of room. Um, but off camera, I don't bring these over here. I actually just do it on their own bench. So I probably would have punched all the holes on both pieces and then put all the rivets in. Now because this bag's got rivets, I'm actually also going to be putting rivets on the strap connectors because it's going to help it kind of tie in and match. And I'm going to rivet the handles on at the end. Great. Okay, so that's what it looks like with all your rivets. I'm going to grab the other one, do the same thing. Take my permanent marker. You could also use a non-permanent marker, like it's just a dot, just don't smudge it. So I can pop that away now, I'm going to just put it back in my tub. And I will add it to the pattern that's hanging up later. One, two, three. One, two, and three. I can also see I haven't cut this one, so I'm going to do that now. Because it's going to be more helpful later. So just like so. Okay. Hole punch. Let's do this. One. Okay, I'm going to stop counting them. You don't need me to count to three over and over and over. You can hold this any which way you want. There's no right or wrong. Whatever you feel comfortable with. too far though, I'm still going to need it. And then grab this one, do the same thing. Now because my caps click when I push them together, I could actually, if I wanted to, come along and do all of these like that and then flip it over and click them all on. Whatever you feel comfortable with. There's not really a right or wrong way. If you've got loose rivets, um, that might not work out for you because you might lose the bottom cap and then just weirdly squish it. So just be conscious of that. If you've got rivets that don't click well, do them one at a time. Also, as you can tell, I'm using double capped rivets. So if I was using single capped rivets, it means that the posts don't have the cap part on, just so they're not smooth. 
in which case I would have to make sure I was pushing them up from the back instead of the front like I was. I'll squish that one down a little bit more. Okay, done. Just check it, make sure that they're all in and firm. Set these aside till later. And now we're going to go fishing in the box for the front slip pocket. So you should have one of those and that one. So that's my slip pocket there. Let's not sew that in, that's for the lining. Okay, right sides together, like so. And then we're going to sew across the top with a joining stitch length. So I've gone back to two and a half. I'm going to back stitch at both ends. And then without, without chopping off that tail, I'm going to fold this over and finger press it so it's even. And then top stitch across there. So that's our little slip pocket. So now I'm gonna fold this in half and find the center of both of them while I'm here. Don't be worried about creasing your stuff because we are still going to have to like turn it inside out. So it's going to be a whole other mission. And then the easiest way to center this actually is to just also fold the pocket in half. And then lay the centers lined up like so. And then I'm just going to stitch down each side right along the edge so I'm just going to use like a 1 8 seam allowance to just baste it in place basically but I am still going to back stitch I just dropped my snips because what's a video without me dropping my snips at least once yep and that time I didn't leave a long enough tail. With industrial machines, you're actually meant to hold the threads when you start stitching. You can notice that I don't. I just make sure there's a long enough tail so it doesn't pull up like it just did. You are actually meant to grab both of these like this before you start stitching. Sometimes my hands are busy not pinning things together to do that. Okay, the pocket's now on, so it's not going to go anywhere, so I don't have to worry about that. So now we want our strap connectors. So the long ones are for later, don't worry about them. One, two, three, four. Now I didn't do a cutting video on this bag because all the pieces actually have the dimensions written on them because I was going to to show you an easy way to cut all this stuff out but yeah I don't give out the measurements and because it was written on all the pattern pieces I won't do a video on things like that So I'm going to sticky tape all four so then I can put the sticky tape back away. Like this. And then I'm going to fold both sides into the center like we do with pretty much all of them. Now if you didn't want to use vinyl straps for this, if you're just new to bag making and you're scared of vinyl, that's fine. Or maybe your machine just can't do vinyl, that's also fine. You can do these out of fabric, just make sure that you interface them to give them the added strength because these are what are going to hold your handles. So if you put a lot of weight in your bag, this is where it's going to be held. 
Now this is quite a flexible vinyl, so I'm going to sticky all of them. And I am butting these up against each other because I don't have to fold this in half again. I'm just going to push them both to the center. One day I'm going to have some of these pre-done for you so you don't have to watch me sticky tape everything. It's not today, but one day. Okay. So now I'm going to need my D-rings. I'm going to thread them on. So the join side is where I'm going to have the join side of my ring. These particular rings come with joins. Um, the chunky ones are smooth all around. We also need a scully back. And I can hear Hubby's about to come out. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to pause the video until he's gone to work and then I will come back and continue. So we're just putting all four on. And I'm using the ruler on my table, actually, to make sure that they're all the same. Alright, I hit pause. I will be back soon. It's been a big break. Um, lots just happened while I turned that off, which for you is like a second. Hubby's car wouldn't start. We had to try and push start it and then get it off the road. It's all quite intense. Anyway. I'm now also going to double-sided tape all of the accent panels for the strap. Oh, and I did one thing off camera. I have marked in chalk uh, where all the straps are going. So I've gone all the way from the top to the bottom because that's what you're meant to do. So we're actually going to attach these ones first before we do these ones but i just sticky tape those first because it's a habit thing okay so we can just take one i'll do them one at a time so i'm gonna line it up quarter inch from the top inch so it doesn't have to be all the way to the top because that is going to be zip so you can either eyeball it or you can grab a ruler and do this. I can eyeball quarter inch, turns out. So yay me. Um, and so then I'm also going to put my stitch length back up to four. And I'm going to put my strap on this edge. So on the outer edge of where you mark it. And then I'm just going to back stitch and stitch down one eighth of an inch on the edge. Like that. Move them out of the way. Then I'm going to lift up and move over. I'm not going to trim that because we're going to hide that anyway. Again, back stitch. Fold that up. So if you've got a small throat, you can actually kind of roll all of this up out of the way if you need to. And then back stitch. Now this raw edge is going to be covered by the next step later. Uh, so don't worry about that. And we're about to put this strap directly over that. See? And it needs to be... Oh, now I don't remember the measurement. Pretty sure that just goes there like that. But I should probably double check the length. Give me one second. Okay. I have folded this wrong after all of my beautiful measuring. So actually what you want to do is you want to line that up like this and line that up like that. 
and then pull that up so it sits like this. And then we're going to stitch it down. So I can actually start stitching down. So the easiest way that I'm looking at this going right, so I'm going to stitch half of it like that. So now I don't have to hold it in place. It's attached down basically. So put my strap on and then line up those bits. And then I'm going to stitch through all of that. Needle down and pivot across. And you'd want to go nice and slow here because there are quite a lot of layers. And then stitch down and back stitch. Right, much easier. So we're going to take our next accent panel. And again, we're going to put it on the outside of our line. And a quarter of an inch down from the top, back stitch, stitch down, back stitch, because we like to hold everything in place. I'm going to trim off those tails because they're annoying me already. I'm not going to cut the, between each side because, again, we're about to cover it. Back stitch. And then I'm going to take this one, start from the bottom. See, I was pushing a car so long, all my double sided tape has started to lift. So I'm just going to push that down again. Okay, so we're going to line this side up along my chalk line. Back stitch, as always. And get a little bit closer. And I can take all of this off and I'm going to tuck this under to line up with the bottom of the other bit like that and then just pull up like that. Needle down, pivot across, needle down and down we go. Backstitch. I'm definitely putting rivets in this because I think it's going to make it look amazing, but so far we're doing all right. Next piece. So I have drawn the lines on this one. So this is the one with my pocket. So when you're drawing the lines, you want to make sure the lines are going to go over your pocket because if they're this side of it, then you're going to have this raw edge showing, which is not what we want. Okay, doesn't matter which one you do first, it's all the same really. Ooh, that sounds funny. I think I'm nearly out of thread. Probably should have checked that before I started the video again, but anyway. Too late now. So you don't have to sew one whole side. You can actually, if you want to, stitch both sides. You can put all four of your top accents, then all four of your straps. For this, there's no right or wrong. Um, the pattern actually says to put these on after I've done all this. But again, personal preference, you do you. Put that in like so. That is actually very well thought out, I'd just like to point out. This sits. Oh, see what I just did there? Not paying attention. I've stitched that on to the wrong side. It's going to cover like all the pocket and have a raw edge sticking out the end. <sighs> Maybe I should have had breakfast first. Anyway, I'm now on a clock to beat my child getting out of bed. I'm just going to pull out all that 
wrong stitching. I don't need to see it. And if you pull it out before you stitch it, it's way easier, I promise. Okay, so let's try that again. I'm going to stitch the same side first. I'm just putting it on the correct side of my strap. And then over. And then down. So I'm stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. So I'm going to mention it again. Okay. I mean, if you want to, you could still leave one clip just to kind of make sure it stays on. Tails behind the machine. Line it up. Back stitch. And off we go. Needle down. Line up those raw edges. Fold it down flat. This side's extra easy because you're actually lining it up with the pocket piece. It works out really well. Pivot down the other side and back stitch. So that top section is actually quite thick because we're going through. Oh. My machine skips some stitches. When my machine starts doing this, I know it's pretty much time to change the needle. Being very rude. So, it's actually skipped. See that corner there? It just missed the stitches altogether. It's very inconsiderate of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back from the other direction. So I'm going to put my needle in. Do a stitch, go back on that stitch, and then stitch up. And then in that hole, pivot. There we go. Much better. Alright, last piece, and then I think, after the rivets I want to put in, I think the outside pieces are nearly done. Needle down when we get close, and tuck it all the way under like so. Make sure everything's lined up nice and smooth. Needle down and pivot. Just did it again. Right. It's being very rude. It's time for a new needle. I'm going to stitch this corner and we're going to change out our needle. This one is a done. I think it's about due anyway. So I'm just going to cut out the stitches that missed because it's going to look weird having like a weird angled stitch there. Alright, let's get a new needle. So I use Schmatt's needles for anyone that's interested. Um, the different, all the rest of the writing is just basically the size in different forms. Um, so I'm using size 18 because that's the biggest needle that this machine can actually do. I've been advised not to put bigger ones in because they're not going to work. And I also use a bobbin as my, what's it called, screwdriver because it gets in there nice and well. Now with industrial machines, for anyone that's thinking about getting one, there's always like a curved side of the needle. For industrials, the curved size must be on this side. And then we just tighten it back up. Done. 
Now mess with me. All right. I'm going to put some rivets because I think they're going to be really pretty. I'm just trying to decide if I want one or two. I think just one. One's going to do it for me. So I'm just going to place this under and I just want it. I can eyeball it, but feel free to measure it. Doing mine like a quarter of an inch from the stitching. This is also just going to help kind of reinforce everything together. I love this whole punch. That just went through like so many layers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then also when I rivet the handles on, it's all kind of going to match in and look amazing. So again, if you're not using double cap rivets, like if you don't have this on the post, push them back in from the back, not the front. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter. I also don't buy single cap rivets. I did at the start when I made a mistake because I was super new to bag making. Uh, but since then, I have learnt my lesson. See, the rivet just gives it that little something extra, I think. You don't have to do them though, totally your choice. But since I'm riveting everything else, I feel like it's going to help it tie in. And I just like the added stability it's going to give. I still haven't decided what zipper colour I want to do yet. I'm thinking a dark red, like a wine colour. There we go. The outsides are now done. So the next bits I'm going to move on to, because I've semi-organised the box, are the side gusset pieces. So we don't have to do a lot to these, we just have to put our little accents on the corner. So I thought that might be a nice quick step to do next. Also, because we don't want to forget them, it'll look weird if only half the bag's got them. So I'm going to sticky tape them all. I've also got my, this is my little um, template. It has been laminated and then I punched a really big hole. It's actually the same hole I used to hang everything on my little card holder things. So that will just now thread directly onto the thingo. Hang up all my patterns. The way I hang them up, I actually stole from, I don't know, I was watching some random video on sewing and pattern makers that do like dresses and costume design hang their paper patterns on like a hook. So that's where I stole my idea from. The professionals. I suppose that's why it works so well, really. Okay. I'm going to place all four on so I don't knock them on the floor. I'm trying to be better at not doing stuff like that. Oh, and another thing I've done off camera is I have embroidered my base with my logo. Oh, there you go. I threw that on the floor instead. Bugger. I don't do that on camera because I've done embroidery videos. I just line it up in the center and off I go. I don't use metal tags anymore. Instead, I embroider my bag. And I think on the bottom, it's still cool, but it's not taking away from like a busy print. If I was trying to put it on this, I think it would be a little bit too busy. Um, in which case, the metal tags would work if you wanted it on there. But my theory was, I've got this expensive machine, I may as well use it as much as possible. Which is why you're going to see, start seeing a lot more embroidery videos. And I'm sorry if I convince you to buy one and your husband's mad at me. But, fun fact, 
embroidery machines make for great gift giving because you can personalize everybody's stuff with their name. I actually made myself something last night while we're talking about embroidery. So I made a notebook cover and I put my logo on it. Um, so now this is going to hold all of the pattern ideas that I have. And I've put a loop for a pen, but I think I've put it a little bit too high because I was winging it. So I'm probably going to cut that out. Um, that's still cool. So if you have an embroidery machine, you could make stuff like that and put people's name on the book or their favorite quote or, you know, whatever. You get the idea. Okay. Side pieces are now ready for later construction. We're not up to that yet, but the gossip pieces are. Oh, actually, no, I lied. We have to put our rivets in so everything matches beautifully. Getting ahead of myself. You could leave it without the rivets. Don't think you have to put the rivets. They are definitely more decorative than functional for here. Whereas the ones that I put, the latest ones I just did before this, they are more functional than decorative. I mean, they serve a purpose as both. But I definitely did them as a functional holding. Ugh. Okay. Punch a hole. And rivets. Over here. Right. I know these don't look like there's a lot of rivets in there, but there kind of is. I try to keep at least a hundred stock on hand for myself so that I never run out. When it starts to look a little bit bare, I just go and buy another heap. So when I'm ordering for the website, I'll just add in an extra, you know, couple of hundred for me. That's only because I do so much sewing. This is not the only bag I'm going to sew today. It's just probably the only video I'm going to do. I've still got five bags to make on my order board. So I will get to that. Oh. Okay, now they're done. Because now they match. So they go back in the box. And I'm going to start pulling out all the lining pieces. Which is pretty much the rest of it. I'm going to put completed pieces. So that's the base. We do have to put bag feet in that. We are going to get to that. I don't need that again for the lining. That can go back in the box. And these are for when we're going to attach the zip. So here we go. So that's a base piece. So I'm going to put the bases together over there. So this is my slip pocket piece so i'm going to put them right sides together go back to a joining stitch of like two and a half and stitch the pocket like that and then if you're ironing ironing it out flat like this and then tuck the other one on top of each other you'll get a crisper edge if that makes sense. I'm going to finger press mine because it does still work. Uh, with enough practice, finger pressing works quite effectively, actually. But you've got to do it in sections. Basically, I'm just rolling that edge until the seam's right at the top. One pocket, and then we can take one of our pieces, and I'm just going to base that around the edges. So you can see it lines up in the corner, so that makes it nice and easy. So I'm just going to baste it all the way around. I 
and then it becomes one piece of fabric to deal with again. It makes it way easier. Okay. Trim your tails. Then we're going to take our tabs for the inside. I'm going to stitch them on. I'm doing them last, they don't flap in my way and annoy me. Um, you could do them first if you want to. You could have done them at the same time you wanted to do your outside ones. You could just sew all the tabs on. Because we all know I like to eliminate small pieces where possible. Put this one on. Oh, I think I just ran out of bobbin thread. Again. Wow, we've gone through that bobbin pretty fast. Okay, so we're going to oil our bobbin this time. Every time I um, run a bobbin, I like to oil the bobbin holder. I have done a video on this for those that need to see. I've done like an up close and personal on this side of the table, which is way diff more difficult than it sounds. Also, always lift your foot so that your feed dogs aren't scratching and damaging the bottom. Right, so I just have to make sure that was attached. Now I've got a little plunger thingy that I use. So I'm just going to take a couple of drops of oil from the vat of oil it sits in. And I just dropped it in the oil. That was not ideal. That's exactly what I was avoiding, actually. A couple of drops in there. And luckily for me, I have a towel here so that I can clean up the oil I've just spilt everywhere. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's much quieter now. It's the only place that you need to oil this machine manually. The rest of it all does it by itself from the big vat of oil it sits in. Um, but your machine will need less servicing and it's less, less likely to overheat because of how much sewing I do. So yeah, I was told every bobbin, oil the bobbin case, holder, thing iron. It's actually got a little sponge in there that will hold the oil, but because of the size of the sponge, it doesn't hold a lot of oil. Pull that through and snip it off. So I don't re-thread my machine every time. It saves me more time than the thread that I waste. So I wasted less than half a meter and it took me two seconds to thread as opposed to the potential two minutes. I'm okay with my decision to waste that much thread to save myself that much time. Can you hear how much quieter that is now? I can, lovely. All right. So that's that side done. Oh, no, it's not. I haven't based it there because I ran out of thread and didn't realise. Now that's that side done. Too busy talking. Right, pop that in the box ready for in a minute. Now this is... Oh, there it is. I'm like, I'm missing one of my little tabs, but I'm not. We're fine. So this is the pocket piece. Now, because my fabric's not directional, I actually just cut it on the fold, which is not, not something I normally do. Um, but it just saves me having to now stitch that together. So I'm going to draw with a pen. I'm going to go half an inch from the top of my fold. So if you've got two separate pieces, stitch them together. And then I always go three quarters of an inch in from the edge here. So I always, that's just how I do mine. Any more is a waste and any less is difficult to sew the sides together. So this is the formula that I like to use. And then that's the size of my zipper hole. Don't need them yet either. They can go down there. So now I'm just going to place my zipper pocket. I want it just out of the seam allowance. So basically this 
pretending that this is stabilizer that's how far I've put it from the edges pretty much maybe a little bit more but I don't want to stitch these when I'm stitching the sides um, and you don't want it too high because you've got to remember where this rivet, this divot is here is where the fold is. So you don't want it too high that you're going to have that problem either. So now I'm just stitching along the line I drew. scissor wrap they must have fallen off hold on got some scissors let's have some lunch uh breakfast i was very hungry we're also getting dangerously close to the time when my child's gonna wake up but that's okay these things happen so i'm just gonna triangle out the corners and then snip up triangle out the corners like so and then I'm going to take the pocket and push it through the hole. I'm then going to use my thumbs to push the corners specifically. So I kind of tug on it a little bit to make like a nice sharp edge. And then you can roll that and then iron it if you want to. I haven't turned Bruce on. So I'm going to finger press mine. So I'm just rolling it in my fingers and then I'm going to score it with my, either my nail, like that. So you can pinch it and score it with your nail um, or just push with your fingers depending on your pushing power. And again, you could iron this. But my ironing board, my portable ironing board was the red towel I used to clean up all of the um, oil so we won't be using that i need to go and wash it in hot soapy water all right so that's my zipper hole so now i need to decide what zipper color i want here i'm thinking my wine or burgundy color because that goes pretty well with the roses so i now um i just have all of mine wrapped up like this in a box so they don't get too messy. Okay, so I'm going to cut a piece, the full length, or width, sorry, not length, width of the pocket. I'm going to melt that end. I'm going to melt this end. We're going to need that, so I'm not going to put that back. I'm just going to pop it over there, and I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take the um, rubber band off because it'll irritate me. Okay, zipper pull, crack the zipper open, and then you feed one side in halfway, um, and if you look in there, there's kind of like a metal divider. If you put it in line with the metal divider, and then pull them up evenly, no, or you can use your zipper jig. Which is kind of the reason I have one. Um, I like to stand over mine. That's just a habit that I got into at the start. And I can't seem to break it. But zipper jig does get it on. Um, if you want to see my zipper jig, I did a separate video on that as well. Because uh, otherwise I have to keep moving it all the time. I used to keep it just here on the like um, clamp to the table here. But I nearly poked my eye out several times, so it had to move to the other side where I don't keep bending so that I don't damage myself. So now I'm just going to top stitch this on. I actually didn't read how she wanted the zipper put in, but this is just as a general rule how I put my zippers in. Quick, it's effective if you wanted to you could put like a little placard so a vinyl accent piece over the top that would be fun as well 
I would, if I was going to do one on this particular bad, I'd probably do it in the red vinyl I use on the scrap. Okay. Trim your tails. And then, if you pick the bag up, your pocket should just fall down on top of itself. Like so. So then I'm just going to fold back the main thing and then stitch down the side. So the way, because I measured three quarters of an inch in, you can get a nice easy half inch seam allowance down the side without too much of the fighting of your bag. I've just got a little bit of excess zip there so I can trim that off in line with the pocket. I don't need that bit. Okay, so now we're going to add our little top tabs. The reason I add them last is so that they don't flop around in my way. One, and then trim your tails. And then two. And then we're up to construction. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put my bag feet in so I don't forget. So I've already marked where the bag feet go. Um, she also has one in the center, which obviously I'm not doing because I've got my logo there. Uh, and sticking one right in the middle would just be pointless. So, again with the hole punch. And again, I'm obviously bringing this back and forth a lot. You could do all of your rivet punching at the same time, um, but sometimes it's nice to give your arm a break. Doing that repetitive motion all the time can sometimes be damaging. So I'm using rivet bag feet. I don't use the split pin type anymore. I don't like them. Even when I like duct tape them in, sometimes they have still come out of bags and I've had to replace them. So now I do the rivets because they're not coming out. They're not going anywhere. So these are 12 mil dome rivet feet, um, but my press that I've got still does them quite well. So I only have one die set for rivets and they just do all the dies, or all the rivets, sorry. Okay, so they clip together quite nicely, which is why I've done all of them. And then I put the dome style on top and then just squish down. And so far I've had none damaged, which is lovely. So there you go, bag feet in. Now I don't have to think about that. So I'm going to take some zipper tape. Oh. Jessie just woke up. My child is now awake. So I'm going to cut that there because that's the length of the zipper that I require. And then I'm going to have to hit pause and do the video later. Sorry guys. So I'm back. Not that it's been any time for you, but you know, I still say it because it's a habit thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the zipper, or clip it, sorry, right sides up against the lining piece. Now I'm going to have to do four layers, which is why I'm clipping, because if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I don't usually clip things together. But I feel like clips are going to be very beneficial in this particular instance. So then I'm going to take my top accent strap and put that right sides down into the clip. And yes, I'm going to go back along these clips a lot, but this is the easiest way where you don't have to overly fiddle with stuff. You can just hold it, clip it, and then come back and do the next one and the next one and the next one. As you can see, my piece is too long, but that's okay. And then I'm going to take this piece right sides down as well, and then add that into the clips. So we've got everything in the clips together.
Now everything but my um, vinyl lines up. So the idea is, is that once we stitch it, we're going to have this piece in here that we're then going to uh, tuck under and do stuff with. But the point is, is if you put them in that order, it's going to sit the way we want it to. So I'm going to stitch it with the exterior side up because I find that the edge of my foot will sit along the teeth a lot better if I do it this way. Personal preference, you don't have to do it this way. You also notice I'm not going 100 miles an hour. That is because there's a lot of layers here and I don't want them to shift under my stitching. And then I'm going to flip it. Normally I would just twist it and top stitch it, but we've got another step to do. Trim off my tails so they're not in the way. So this is now what we're left with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and tuck it in on itself and fold it down like this. So the idea is, is that we're putting fun little accent piece. You may also wish to iron this if it's not behaving. So I just want the accent piece quite small. So I'm joining it to there. So I'm going about halfway and then I'm tucking it under like so. Uh, so your accent piece is actually designed to not be vinyl. You could do it in a fabric if you wanted to. And then I'm going to stitch this down. So I'm going to do mine in sections, but I'm going to crank my stitch length up to four so it's decorative. So again, I'm going in and then tucking it under and stitching it down. So I'm going in and then tucking it under. there and then tucking it under so again there and then tucking it under Last little bit there, and then tucking it under. I'm just going to run off the edge because I've got to trim that off anyway. And then now I'm going to fold under this edge here, like so, and then top stitch along the zipper edge, like we normally would. And I'm also trying to pull that underside down. It's quite thick though, so it's okay if you can't do it. So another easier way I've just thought about doing that panel that I just stitched down. I've just had a thought on that. Where's my other panel? That is not it. Ah, there you go. Fold it in half, like this. So there's a raw edge. Then when we stitch that all in, we can then just fold it over. Um, so I'm gonna take my other piece. Actually, I'm gonna cut off this excess because it's annoying me. Don't need that, where's the bin? Keep shifting sides with my bins. Okay, so I'm going to line this up with clips. And that's going to have to be on a joining stitch while I remember. Spread that out flat so that we get less bulk there. And then just going along every probably inch and a half, I think is approximately what I clip things at. And then again, clip this open and flat to minimize bulk. Now 
I'm going to do it the same way as the other side in the interest of mm, double fairness or whatever. Um, but you could also, if you folded it in half and stuck them both in, then when we come to the other bit, you could just tuck it under. But I want mine to be the same. So I'm going to do it the same way I did the first one. Again, adding it into the clips. And then I'm going to take my other outside piece and then add that into all the clips as well. Now you can, by all means, try and clip all four at the same time. If that's your thing, 100% go for it. As you can tell, it's not my thing. That's why I'm not doing it. But each to their own. Okay, lots of clips, lots of pieces. If you haven't figured it out yet, this is going to be like a monster to turn. Okay. Trap off that excess. Like so. And so now we've got this. So I suppose if you wanted to, you could come along and clip it to make it easier. So at least it holds that part, because it's already stitched in, it just holds it where you want it to sit. I like it. Clipping is way easier, I think. Right. It's clipped. So now we're going to want to top stitch. So in fact, now that I've um, clipped it, I can actually do the side closest to the zipper first if I want to. I don't have to, but I'm going to. I'm just using my hand to fold under that other bit. And I'm making sure that the lining is not going to get caught in it as well. So this is a very bulky section. So you're going to go nice and slowly and again make sure that you're not tacking the lining where you don't want it to be. See I want to keep this bag too. I just don't need that many handbags. along this actually is going to be the easier side so I've now already clipped it all in place I'm just going to pull my clips off as I go what we should have. Put your zipper pulls on right now. I finished with the um, 
zipper tape. So I'm just going to put that away. All right, so I'm going to put a zipper tab on each end so that the bag can be open from the center. Um, because it's only a little handbag, you don't have to do this, but it's just more of the aesthetic of going because that's my thing, obviously. And I'm going to use my zipper jig because the bag is quite stiff and I don't feel like fighting it. So I'm just going to put my zipper jigs on. I uh, put my zippers on with my zipper jig. Again, I like to stand over it. I find it easier. Oh, and see, I've made a mistake here. See here how I said the lining was being difficult? I've actually stitched it in. So I'm going to have to unpick that to get it out of there. All right, let's see. So from here. So I don't want to stay, unpick it further than I have to. Uh, so it's only about not even four inches. So I'm actually just going to use my snips to pull the threads out one at a time. And then when they get annoyingly long, you just cut them off. Because um, this way it's not going to damage the vinyl. Well, any more than the perforated holes already have, but I can just go back through those holes, so that's okay. Normally I would just um, pull and then snip the stitches, but because it's thick layers and the vinyl, I don't want to do it that way, so I'm going to do it this way one at a time. Slightly more time consuming, but less damaging to the vinyl accent, which is obviously very important to us. We don't want to wreck it. Okay. So that still didn't get it, so it means that the other one... Oh, that's annoying. All right, so now I'm going to come to the inside, see if I can snip the stitches that are the problem. So what I've done is when I joined the zipper on, I've actually stitched it here. It's because I wasn't fully concentrating, people. So I'm going to sit here and unpull it. But if you're sewing along and you don't quite sew as fast as me, this will give you a chance to catch up. So we're doing this. It's not a lot that I have to unpick. Just enough to be annoying. I kind of like making mistakes on camera. It means I can show you how to fix them. So I just, I don't use quick unpicks. I don't like them. There we go. So I had just caught this side, but that's okay. So now we just got to go back and layer up all those pieces and do that little section again. It's not the whole thing, so it's not going to be super hard to do. This got very entangled. Alright, so I don't even need to put a clip in because it's such a small area, it's only like this much. So what I might do is I might tack it on the edge with those ones because they're all sitting where I want them. And then trim off all these tails because there's a lot. And then I can just sew the final piece on with the correct seam allowance. Like so. Right, so 
So that's now fixed. The top's now looking good. And so now I just want to make sure that that's well and truly out of the way on that side while I top stitch that last little bit again. Move that out of my back stitching way. I'm going to try and go through the same holes that I had made before. Oh, fine. Go on the floor. Whatever. Okay. That's better. Now I can get my zipper on. Which was probably in the bowl. Oh no, it's on my zipper jig. Right, so I'm going to crack the zip. And then feed the zip into the zipper jig and then what I want to do is I want to bring them both together to make sure that there's no weird bubbles because if there's a bubble then you'll need to take off one side and align it so there's not a bubble all right so I'm just going to open it a little bit doesn't need to be all the way and then I'm going to grab not my base there's those sides so we need those two and we need the lining version of these two which I know I just had here we go so you should have two linings two outers with your little accents on we're going to do the d-rings in a second that is this piece so this is the last of the pieces and the base so we're getting close all right Open this up, I'll grab this piece and put the flat edge along the flat edge of your zippered section and then we're going to just sew the two lining pieces together up to but not over the zip with a joining stitch length. We don't want to go over the zip, we just want to go up to it. This is where we waste the most thread by the way guys. I'm going to put my tub away because it's technically been sitting on the bin the whole time. It's in my way. Okay. Then I'm going to grab the other side and do the same thing. Now, if you're using a size 5 zipper, this should all line up perfectly. If you're using a different size zipper and it's not lining up, that's okay. Just trim the ink, like the larger bit down so it fits the same size so now you should have this but there should be a hole at the zipper where you can stick your finger through we are going to close that up in a minute just not yet okay we're going to do the same oh my god are you okay i think he's in the pantry all right i'm gonna go hit pause again and go see what he's up to yeah, he smashed a jar of, um, what are they called? Asparagus. I'm not sure why we have a jar of asparagus, except that we don't anymore. He was trying to climb up and get himself a lolly from the cupboard, which if he had asked, I would have given him one. But now that he's climbed up there, he'll have to wait. So anyway... We have now stitched both of those, and I've left, I probably left a little bit too big of a gap, but that's okay. Um, because I need to be able to insert my D-ring connector, which this is actually two of them. I just do them together and then chop it in half once I've stuck it together, because I find it a bit easier. Take my snips, fold it in half, cut it. If you were going to uh, top stitch it, you could do that as well. Right, so I'm going to attach my D-ring. So my joins on the inside. And then I'm going to come to this side and just insert it so that it's going to sit directly over the zipper. So you want it nice and centered. You don't want it off center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten out all these layers so the lining as well as the top, and then stitch over all of it. 
to seal up the holes. So we're going to go nice and slow because there's quite a lot of bulk here. And then when I get to the other one, the other side join, I'm going to swivel. And to reinforce this seam, I'm going to stitch down on an angle. Just a little angle. I'm kind of going to zigzag. And then when I get over the other side of that, I'm going to have a needle down. I'm going to pivot back and I'm going to zigzag a third time. So what this is doing is having more stitches hold the weight of the bag. So instead of just the one line, I've now got three lines. It's not the neatest, but it doesn't matter, you don't see it. And so now my D-ring is attached. So if I was to wear this on my shoulder, it's not just a single line of stitching anymore that's holding it in place, it's all three. It's like a safety precaution. So again, we're going to do the lining. Line up the edges. I always test to make sure that it fits properly before I just start stitching. Nothing worse than having it crooked. Trim my tails as I go so it doesn't get too messy. If you don't trim your tails, that's when things start kind of getting joined and in the way. Stitch up to, but not over the zip. Pull it out, trim your tails, open out the top. We're going to do the same thing, so right sides together. Make sure it's nice and even. Pull back your lining fabric so it's not in the way. Up to, but not over the zipper. So I'm stitching about halfway over the accent part. I want to leave enough room to slide this in easy because um, the harder it is the more frustrating it gets. So if you leave a little bit of a bigger gap it's not going to hurt because we're going to stitch it shut anyway. Okay so joining side on the flat side and then from this way we're just going to slot it in and then line it up. So I want it nice and centered over my zip and I want about the same amount sticking out on both sides so that they look even. And then lay all the layers flat like so. Now I always stitch from the outside because the outside's usually got the bigger hole. I always do a smaller hole in the lining than the outer. My thread just shredded, um, not 100% sure why, but that's okay. I'm just going to pivot and stitch it all again. As you can see, I'm just kind of shoving the bag out of the way. Alright, needle down, pivot, now we're going to do our angle. What I don't recommend is trying to backstitch that whole way. Backstitching on machines can sometimes get a bit tricky. And while it looks like it'll be easier than shoving the bag through here, backstitching is when I usually break needles. It doesn't like backstitching over eight layers or something. So I always just prefer to pivot it. Look at us go. So now I'm going to open this all the way up. I'm also going to check to make sure that everything is secure, that there's no holes anymore. You're going to make sure that's nice and sewn. Buddy, no, you know, I will get this bag finished. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is grab my base and I'm going to stitch it to the zipper pocket side so that it's attached. I'm just doing the one side, done. So I'm going to join all of my lining pieces first and then I'm going to do the outside piece because the outside piece is obviously much much thicker so I want to start with the easy part which is the lining. So I'm going to clip this because I can it's already kind of pulling and fighting me and I don't feel like fighting it back so I'm going to clip it 
Now, with this little seam allowance bit here, I am going to push it towards the base. You always want it to face the bottom. Makes the bag sit nicer. I'm going to work my way up to the join of the tab. Making sure that everything's sitting straight and flush. It doesn't look like it, but it is even. It's just fighting me a lot. Okay. So now I'm going to stitch up that side. By the way, if you heard my child yelling, he's just yelling at the television. What is wrong with this today? It's not my day for sewing, I tell you. All right. Next side. Start at the bottom. Clip your way up. Use as many clips as you need because, again, there's a lot of stabilizer on the outside of this to make it look very suitcasey. He's copying the television. bottom or bottom to top whatever makes you happy um i'm just trying to maneuver it so i can get the um sewing machine in there okay so it's starting to come together as a bag now we're going to do all the lining pieces first and then i'm going to leave the whole base open because that's how i'm going to turn the bag I want a bigger space as possible because this is fighting me already and I'm only on the lining so the outside is going to be much much more extreme which is fine not super hard I'm probably elaborating a little bit but normally I don't pin linings because I can just hold it in place with my hands this one I'm definitely going to pin or clip or whatever and then trim your tails of which I can see some that I've left where's that one always trim your tails it just helps to be neater all right last lining side Then I'm going to leave the bottom of the lining open so that I can turn the bag through there as simple as possible. And then I can stitch it up through the zipper pocket. So again, I'm taking this little um, seam allowance from the side and pointing it towards the bottom. Okay. And in we go. pieces so now that I hold this up you can't really tell but it does now have the bag shape going on so now we're going to do the same to the outside this is where stuff's going to get interesting so what you want to do is you want to line up your accent vinyl pieces so that they match because that's something that people will notice on the bag straight away if they don't match People don't notice imperfect stitching, but they do notice non-matching panels. So that is something that you may want to consider while doing this.
lots of clips on this side. Like I said, it is quite stiff and fighting me. And then you can basically just sew up along the stabilizer because that's your seam allowance. I was obviously backstitched potentially a little bit too much in that corner, but I just really want to make sure it's going to stay. And then I'm going to check it by turning it out and having a look. And then we can push it back in. So that's one side. Next side, again, lining up my accents, clipping it in place and then putting another clip right next to it so it doesn't shift and then coming up to the top accent and lining that one up and another clip right next to that so it doesn't shift and then turning that seam allowance to the bottom and then adding a bunch of clips because it makes me feel safer that it's not going to shift and it still might but at least we're trying to make it not shift. All right, looking lovely, by the way. So again, lining up my accent at the bottom and then putting another clip right next to it so it doesn't move around. And then coming up to the top and lining the top ones up. Now, if you've chosen the square ones, the lining up section that I just did is going to be much, much easier than if you did the round. I would recommend the rounds for an intermediate to advanced. Uh, and if you're a beginner, start with perhaps square corners. I'm not saying don't do them, I'm just, you know, if you're really new to bag making and you haven't had a history of sewing, perhaps don't jump, you know, head first. Alright, so again, matching it up, put a clip in it, another clip next to it, top accents, put a clip in it, another one next to it. And then always make sure that this seam allowance points down. Okay, last side. Do you know what? The outside was actually easier to stitch than the lining, weirdly enough. Another tip that I'm going to say now, I know I said it before, but with the accent, where you're going to put your rivets, make sure that you don't stray from where she tells you to put them. Because uh, you're probably going to stitch over them if you do. I was coming very close to those rivets. We obviously don't want to do that. Okay, so as always, I'm going to do the long sides of the base first. That's my thing. Oops. I like to do the long edges first. Because they're the easy ones, usually. Um, and I've actually got... I've clipped the centre... Not that I really needed to. Um, so you can just make sure that it's all lining up. Pull it out. Trim your tails. And again, come and clip the long side with as many clips as you see fit. I am putting lots because there is a lot going on here. And then again, I'm going to pull the bag out of the way, come in, back stitch, and then stitch along slowly. it out, 
from your tails. Okay, short sides. I'm going to clip both of them at the same time. Like that. And I'm going to squish this down so I can get it under the machine. I'm just trying to kind of push all of that out of the way. So these short sides are where it's getting interesting because of the bulk of all the stabilizer. bobbin thread doing that no I ran out again wow we're on fire guys trim those tails okay this will be the last bobbin really hoping I'd make it then just not quite that's because of all the tails we used in the sides there's a lot of excess waste when you do those kind of sides but they're worth it i'm only not oiling this time because it had a lot of oil the last time and half the bobbin was wasted into the bin so we're cool Tie it through, tie it off, pull it through, chop it off, and then thread the last little bit. I don't do this on domestics um, because, like, my domestics, I don't even have to let go of the thread. Like, I can hold the end and thread the whole thing. This one's got a bunch of tricky stuff here. It's not that it's hard, it's merely time consuming. Okay, so again, we need to squish this down so I can get it under the machine. Slow and steady is winning my race right now. None of this speed anything. So now we just want to make sure that all our corners have been sealed. And then we can start the turn. Now because I haven't sealed the bottom, I literally just have to turn it on itself. So while this is still going to be tricky, it's going to be much easier than trying to put it through a pocket this big. Because I've got the whole base to work with. So I'm going to come in and grab a corner, I'm going to push it in and then pinch it and try and kind of fold the bag over it. I know it looks like I'm struggling but I'm just doing it in small sections because again it's a huge bag with a lot of stabilizer. Every outside piece had a piece of um, thick stabilizer. You could also probably use foam instead. I might make one with foam instead just to see. Um, but for the first bag, I like to try and stick to the pattern. Okay. Poke out my corners. How cute is this looking? And then poke out that corner. And then that corner. Alright. See that? I don't like that. So now I'm going to have to turn the bag inside out again to fix it. Because I'm not leaving it there. But I don't have to turn the whole bag. Which is, you know, a bit of a godsend. I just have to stitch 
that little corner. So I can just kind of turn that bit out and push this bit back and stitch over the corner. Like so. And that should have sealed it up. Ah, oh, would you look at that? Much better. Don't think that you have to turn the whole bag out because of one little bit. Sometimes you can just turn that little bit out and it works out fine. I am pushing all of my corners all the way out because the point of this bag is nice sharp pointy corners like that. And you'll see that this now turns quite nicely. Yes, honey. Are you talking about the splat monster? You want to watch splat monster? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to say hello? Okay. Why do you even say hello? You're not going to say hello? <laughs> Alright, splat monster. Onto it. So we're going to go through the zipper pocket and grab the base and pull the base through the zipper pocket. Like that. And then we're going to line up those edges. So I'm going to clip this for fear that it's going to shift on me. So I'm doing the other long side first, like I did with the base. He loves singing along. Who am I to object? It's adorable. All right. So we've got the lining through. You may find that you'll have to turn some of the bag That's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna stitch the long edge. So I'm just gonna try and keep this part of the bag out of my way, while also making sure what's going on here. Here we go. No, that end doesn't want to go under first, that's fine. Okay, I'm gonna shut that door. He likes to yell at the PJ masks. He gets very excited. It's his latest favorite. Do the two short edges. Yeah. Which is from here to here. Now I am going to clip this as well. If you're super struggling with it all, you could hand stitch it if you really wanted to. If it's all just too much to try and get out, you could hand stitch it. All right. It's coming up to here. Back stitching. And then a stitch across with the other stitching. And then that excess, I'm going to chop off. I'm actually going to do it to all sides, but that one was really annoying me. All right, final one. So I can't actually pull that lining out anymore because it's attached right here. So that's why it's being a little bit more difficult, but it's not impossible. You've just got to maneuver the bag. There. And... There, like that. So then again, we're going to put it under. 
back stitch. Aha! I like it. Alright, so now I'm going to trim off some of this seam allowance so that the base is going to sit nicer in the bottom of the bag. We don't need this much seam allowance. So I'm going to chop off like half. Okay, then we're going to pull out the lining. Oop, held that thought. There we go. It was stuck in a little bit of a seam from that last bit I just stitched, but it was only the seam allowance on this, so you could just trim it off. So I'm just going to tuck under the raw edges. And then stitch as close as you can to that edge without falling off the edge. I know the bag looks weird, just let me straighten it out. Alright, zip that up, push those out. And then the bottom. And then zip up one side, up the other. Oh, look at that. Mine obviously needs a little bit of an iron, but I think we've done it quite well. Now we just need to attach our handles. So I'm going to grab a permanent marker. I actually don't need the machine on anymore. We're done with that. Grab a permanent marker. And for these handles, I'm going to measure half an inch up and then one inch from that mark. If I was using the chunky zippers, uh, it's not chunky zippers, sorry, the chunky square rings i would be doing one and a quarter inches up so i do half an inch and then one and a quarter that extra little bit just allows to get around the ring without it being too tight so you don't stretch and wreck your vinyl one and two all right punch some holes with my hole punch What I also like about this hole punch is that I can use either hand. This bag in these colours feels very dark and luxurious. I really want to keep it. So what I'll be doing um, to straighten this bag out before I sell it, I'm going to iron it from the inside. I've actually now bought a mini iron. So I've got this very cute mini iron so I can get inside and iron it from the inside um, to help flatten everything out. Okay, so that's all the holes punched. So now I need these and I'm just going to go, see like the bottom here. To help crease this bit, I can pinch it and then work it back and forth. So do this kind of a motion with your fingers to help set that crease in nicely. Because the crease along the bottom will help the sides look glorious as well. So I'm going to take my handles and I always have the join from these handles face the inside of the bag. That's just my personal preference. You don't have to do it that way. Whichever way you do choose, though, I would probably recommend doing it to both handles so that it's the same. And I'm going to put one of my caps on and squish it down. And then I'm going to do the other side. So to get that, I hold it straight and then just turn it to the inside so that I don't get any twists. And then put a cap on. This 
So again, double cap rivet so it doesn't matter which way you um, push it through. So it can be from the back or the front and it won't matter because you've got the cap on it. Okay. And then up and under, squish it properly. And I've just got one more. So spread it out, twist it around, and go up, under, and through. One, two. Squish the posts through like that. This is adorable. See? And then it's just like a little handbag. Obviously, I've got that strap. There we go. So it's designed to be an arm bag like this. And then if you want it on the shoulder, you can take your strap and attach it over like that. I'm really happy with how that bag come out. Just needs a good iron. So there you go, guys. I hope that was helpful. Sorry for all the stops. I know you will tell me not to apologize because it's my kid and all, but I do try to record these when he's not home. But this one is being released today, so I had to get the video done. Alright, see you next time!